Want to learn how you can design your own cereal bag wrappers in Canva? Then keep on watching. Hey y'all, Victoria Shree here with Pretty Party and Crafty and we're going to jump right into how to design your own cereal bag wrapper as well as how to assemble. Now this template is available in my shop. I have a Photoshop version and this Canva version or you can start from scratch. So if you're going to do this from scratch, just make sure that the document size is 8.5 by 11. And then for the dimensions, the center, it's going to start at the 2.875 mark and end at the 8.125 mark. For the top, it starts at 0 0.650, ends at 1.4. And then for the bottom, it is 6.9 and ends at 7.65. The overall size of this is just 11 inches by 7 inches. But again, you can get the template from our shop. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start designing. So I'm going to go to Elements and start looking for things that I want. So I know I want a rainbow. And I'm going to look under Graphics to try to find a rainbow that I can use. And I'm also going to go ahead and change my colors. So before I add that rainbow, I want my background to actually be all pink, so I'm going to change that purple, just make sure it's pink as well. All right. Because I'm putting this on here, I want my rainbow to be large, so instead of dragging it and resizing it, I'm going to leave it large, and I'm just going to make sure that it's center, and I'm going to crop it by clicking and dragging the right side and the left side. Now, if I wanted to, I could search for marshmallow cereal bowl. Go to see all, and they have this that you could use. I'm gonna delete that. But I'm just gonna to go to my uploads because I already have something available. I'll be sure to add the link to the clipboard that I'm using in the description, but at this point, again, I'm just adding it to the canvas and cropping it so that it fits. Next, I'm going to start adding text. So on your keyboard, you can press T or you can press the text icon and choose whether or not you want a heading or a smaller subheading or body of text. So I just click T on my keyboard and you can start typing away. So the text is going to say, I'm seriously lucky to have you as a classmate. It's a play on words. The font that I'm using is called Blueberry, and I'm just making some last minute adjustments so that everything fits the way that I want it to. For lucky, I know I want to change that color. I want to change it to yellow. So I'm just going to select the A at the top for text color, and then I'm going to choose my yellow. So I could go with that yellow, or if you want to pull out the color in the image, you can go where it says document colors, select the plus sign for add a new color, and then select the eyedropper. So this way you can choose an exact color from your graphic. So I just selected that and it's just slightly different, but that's a great way just to make sure you're matching in your design and you can use colors from your graphics. And to make Lucky stand out, I decided to change that font to something different. And then I'm going to add a outline to this. So with it selected, I'm gonna to go to Effects and go to Outline. Okay, I'm gonna bring that size up. Okay, and I want the color of that outline, I'm gonna take it all the way up. I want the color of that outline to be red, so I'm gonna select the color and make sure that that is red. Alrighty. I decided to change the background from pink to red because I'm gonna add it to my blog as a freebie and I wanna make sure that it's gender neutral. After I do that, I'm going to add some more graphics such as the marshmallows to fill out the design. Okay, I'm gonna to go to position. I'm gonna to go to layers and I'm gonna select all the marshmallows that I just added.
and then I'm going to resize it at once so I don't have to resize individually. At this point, I'm just rearranging all of the marshmallows individually to fill out the design. I'm also going to rotate them to make sure that they're not all facing the same directions. And I'm going to add some additional text to the cereal bowl. And then I'm gonna curve it just a little bit, I'm thinking. Effects, under shape, select curve. I'm gonna come down some. I'm gonna curve it the other way so I can kinda take the shape of the bowl just a little bit. So it's like at a negative six. All right, and then I'm gonna change that color. I'm thinking, let's do red. And then we can do the effect maybe with a stroke um, with yellow. All right, now we can add what we're gonna add to the sides. So let's see, what can we add? Okay, so first I'm gonna go to element and I'm gonna select nutritional facts. Now I do have a facts label that's available in the shop and I'll be sure to link that, but this is one. Now, of course this has this over here. So if I wanted to change that, we can change that to red or we could change it to yellow. I'm gonna do red. But it has this um, like shadow that or the drop shadow that I do not like. So what we're going to do, we're going to double click on the image. You might have to click three or four times. And what I want to do is I want to crop it. So I'm going to take this and just crop it to get that black off. And then I'm going to hit done. Awesome. So now I have my nutritional facts and I don't have that little wonky shadow. Okay, we can also add a barcode. Hopefully you have your own, um, but if you want to add just a generic barcode, you could, but we could also do a QR code. So if you go to apps, um, you could search for a QR code. So we'll just put pretty party and crafty.com generate QR code awesome and you could customize this um, with a different color so just a heads up now we're just going to finish this design up by adding additional graphics and text to the left side and also, we're not going to forget our PNG paper crimps. This is available in my shop, and we're adding it across the top and bottom so we can skip crimping when we're done. All right, so looking at this, this is good. This, I'm ready to print. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, save it to my computer or download it to my computer. So I'm just going to hit share, download. I'm going to download it as a PNG and hit download again. All right, now that I have it downloaded, I'm just going to go to the folder that it's downloaded in and it's in my downloads folder. What I'm going to do is just right click it to like show more options so we can get the print and we'll select print. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to select your printer. So I'm going to be printing on the 8500. And my paper size is going to be letter. And I'm gonna leave everything else the same for now. And I'm gonna to go to options. This is where we're gonna select our settings and preferences. So you're gonna click on printer properties and make sure everything is set up the way that you want. So my paper source, this is where you put your paper. Mine is gonna be in the rear paper feeder. Document size is letter size. Borderless is checked, and I'm just going to go to the settings just for a moment and make sure that it's on auto expand and make sure that it's on medium. All right, I'm going to hit OK because that's correct. It's landscape. My paper type, make sure you choose photo paper glossy. If you don't choose glossy in the paper type and you're printing on glossy paper, it will smear. So make sure that you select photo paper glossy or HP photo if you're printing using an HP printer. 
My color is color. My quality, you can choose standard or high. For this, I'm just going to select standard. Now, if you want to know what else I do to make sure that my colors come out vibrant, this is an additional step that you can do, or you can skip this step. It's up to you. If you like the way that your printer prints, at this point, you can just hit OK and press print. But I'm going to change some color settings. So I'm going to click More Options. Under Color Correction, I'm going to select Custom. I'm going to select Advanced. Color Management, I'm going to make sure that Color Controls is selected because it may be on fixed photo. If fixed photo is selected or ICM or anything else, just make sure you select color controls. Then you'll get these options. So color mode, I'm gonna change that to Adobe RGB. And gamma, I'm gonna set that to 1.8. Now, these are my settings. Some people, they like to go in and mess with brightness, contrast, saturation, density, play around with the color wheel. That's totally up to you but these are the settings that I use. Okay, once that's set, I'm gonna hit OK. Hit OK again, and then we're gonna go ahead and print this out, so I'm gonna select Print. I used our 37 pound party printables paper for this, and as you can see, it printed beautifully, even on standard quality. After you print, you're gonna trim the top and the bottom. I'm gonna leave the left and the right. Then you're gonna do a gate fold and you're gonna add double-sided adhesive across the top, down the right, and across the bottom. When I do the top and the bottom, I only add it to the center section only. You're gonna wrap it around your cereal bag and seal. You're gonna turn it over, seal the bottom, kinda of squeeze the middle in, then seal the top. So at this point, you could be finished, but I picked up my pinking shears and added zigzag edges. So hopefully with this tutorial, you're, you can create your own cereal bags. If you learned something new, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, all that good stuff. All right, later, y'all.